friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another WW Weekly Meal Prep. I have three absolutely delicious, I mean delicious recipes in store for you. I have breakfast, I have lunch, and I have a sweet treat, all of which are delicious and WW friendly. So if you wanna see what I'm meal prepping for the week to help me stay on track during this crazy, busy, hard to stay on track month, just stay tuned. For my breakfast this week, I'm gonna be making a hash brown breakfast casserole. This isn't your mama's breakfast casserole, you guys. This is going to be delicious. So let me show you what is in my hash brown breakfast casserole. First, you're going to need some milk or milk alternative of your choice. I'm gonna be using the Fairlife fat-free milk. Sour cream, I have fat-free. Eggs, bacon, I'm gonna be using the Private Selection Center Cut Bacon. This is the lowest smart point bacon I can find. You can actually have two slices for one smart point. It is a Fred Meyer or Kroger brand. So if you have a Kroger or Fred Meyer nearby, I would recommend this bacon, it's delicious. And again, the lowest point bacon that I've been able to find. You're also going to need a small onion. I'm gonna be doing a mix of fat-free shredded cheese and light Mexican shredded cheese. And then of course you're going to need some shredded hash browns. So let's get started on my breakfast prep. So the first thing we need to do for breakfast prep is get our bacon cooked. So I went ahead and lined a cookie sheet with some aluminum foil, added my entire pack of bacon. I always just do the whole pack because I throw whatever's left over in a little baggie and we can add it to sandwiches or whatever we want with the extra bacon. So I'm gonna put this in the oven at 375 until it's nice and crispy. While our bacon's in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and just cook down these onions. I want to get them a little crispy, make them so they're nice and translucent. So I just put them in a small pan here on the stove. So I have my onions done. Look how good those look, nice and brown, yum. And then I have my 12 slices of center cut bacon here on the side. So we're literally gonna put this casserole together. I measured out about four cups of the shredded hash browns into my large bowl. To my shredded hash browns, I am gonna go ahead and add in my onion. Oh, you guys, this is gonna be so delicious. And we're just gonna kind of stir as we go because we're gonna be putting a lot of ingredients in here and we wanna make sure everything gets nice and combined together. So. My onions are in. To that, I'm gonna be adding six eggs, and I always just crack them in a separate bowl because you guys know me, I'm notorious for shells. If I crack right over my dish, it's kind of a pro tip anyways to always crack your eggs separately just to make sure you avoid getting any shells. So again, just a quick mix here. Oh, yum, this is looking so good. All right, and then next, I'm gonna be adding in three quarters of a cup of my fat-free sour cream. Now, you guys can use a light sour cream as well. I don't know if it will change the points. I generally do not eat fat-free sour cream, but I don't mind baking with it because I don't really notice a difference. Same goes with cream cheese. I'm not a big fan of eating fat-free cream cheese like on a bagel, but I don't mind cooking with it because it does its job, gives you that cream cheese flavor. So kind of same goes with fat-free sour cream. So, oh, this is looking delicious. I'm also going to add three quarters of a cup of my Fair Life milk. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and add in my cheese. So I have one and a half cups of fat-free cheese and one cup of Trader Joe's light shredded cheese. By adding in this fat-free cheese, it just reduces our points dramatically. So this is going to be so cheesy. Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm so incredibly excited for this casserole. All right, lastly, I have bacon. I have 12 slices, so I'm literally just going to crumble it into my casserole we want to go ahead and crumble in all 12 slices give it another mix and then we're ready to get this into our baking dish it's cold outside but the fire keeps us warm we can't spend and the last step is we're just going to stir in that bacon oh I'm telling you, you guys, yum. I do wanna season my casserole. I think I'm gonna add, the recipe does say you can add a little salt and pepper. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I also think I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder as well. So a little bit of garlic powder. 
and then again a little bit of salt and pepper and that's just really going to bring out those flavors and then you want to get a greased 9 by 13 baking dish so i'm going to go ahead and just spray mine with some non-stick cooking spray and then we're going to preheat our oven to 375 and let's get this casserole going okay so i have my dish here sprayed with some non-stick cooking spray you guys, look at how amazing this looks. Oh, I'm so excited. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this in our baking dish, spread it out nice and evenly, and then it's ready to go into the oven. Again, at 375 for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, just depending on your oven. You wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through and you don't wanna see any liquid from the eggs. That's the main thing is you wanna make sure that it's solidified, the eggs have cooked all the way through. So there you have it. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is thick. I'm really excited about this. I've been craving some hash brown casserole. Look at this deliciousness. So let's get this into the oven. All right, our breakfast hash brown casseroles out of the oven. You guys, look how amazing this looks. You can see that deliciousness. Ah, oh, yum. So I'm going to be cutting this into eight equal servings. I do want to let it set and rest for a little bit just to make sure that they're nice and solid pieces before I cut it and put it into my meal prep container. So let me get this cut into eight servings, show you what it looks, serving looks like and give you the smart points. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe and I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. So here is my completed breakfast for the week. You guys, I just wanna let you know, this hash brown casserole is so good. I did try a little taste of it. It is so creamy from that cream cheese and cheesy and that bacon adds the perfect amount of salt. So delicious. So let's take a look at breakfast prep and I'll give you the point. So I went ahead and cut my hash brown casserole into eight servings. This is one eighth. So this is quite a large serving and this entire serving is seven smart points and then i'm just going to pair that with some fresh fruit i have both some grapes and some raspberries just kind of depending on the day so this entire breakfast all you have to count for is seven smart points and again that is on the green plan if you follow the blue or purple yours will be a little bit less just because you don't have to count for the eggs if you're interested in knowing the points for blue or purple, they are linked on my Facebook group. So make sure you head over and join that. We put all of the plan color points under all of the recipes. So it makes it really easy on the Facebook group. So this is my seven smart point breakfast. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for you and me The snow is falling down And the storm is on its way But as long as you're around Everything will be okay Cause all I wanna do is spend this holiday with you Tomorrow it is Christmas The first for me and you I longed for this moment To have you for myself In a cabin out of nowhere Just us and no one else For my lunches this week, I'm gonna be making pizza pot pies. I have been craving pizza, so I found this recipe. It sounds delicious, so let me show you what is in our pizza pot pies. First, you're going to need some all-purpose flour, minced garlic, some sort of sugar alternative. I'm going to be using the monk fruit sweetener, Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles, my marinara is zero points. It is the skinniest dish crock pot marinara. I will link the recipe down below for you guys. This is zero points on any plan. So highly recommend. It is easy peasy to make in the crock pot and it is delicious. Also, you'll need some salt, some ramekins because we are making little pot pies. For seasoning, you'll need Italian seasoning and basil, sliced mushrooms, Canadian bacon, turkey pepperoni, yeast, and cheese of your choice. I'm gonna be doing the Trader Joe's organic shredded mozzarella. So let's get started on these pizza pot pies. 
So the first thing that we need to do is we are gonna go ahead and add our packet of yeast to our bowl, the entire package. And then we are going to add one cup of the two cups of our flour. We'll be gradually adding in the remaining flour. So just try to get as close to one cup of it as you can. And then to that, we're also going to add one and a half teaspoons of that monk fruit sweetener, a little bit of salt, and that's just going to help enhance that flavor. And the recipe wants about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to add two thirds of a cup of very, very warm water. And then we are going to give this a mix. We want to combine that yeast, that flour, everything nice and combined and then we are going to add in the remaining flour until we make a very very soft dough so this is a little bit on the doughy side so we want to continue to add in our flour until we've added in all two cups of that and that's going to make our dough so let's add in that flour i'll be back to show you kind of what the dough looks like we'll get it into a ball give it a little chance to rise and then we're ready to move on with our pizza pot pies go ahead and put your dough out on a cutting board surface and you're going to take your hands and we're going to knead this for about four minutes until it has a little bit of elasticity to it it should still be a little bit sticky which mine is so go ahead and get that nice and kneaded out and into a round ball of dough and this is the crust to our pizza pot pies how fun is it you guys that we get to make our own crust now i know i'm going to get the question of can you make two ingredient dough i would imagine yes that you can and it may actually lower the points for the blue and purple plan if you did go the two ingredient dough route instead of using flour and yeast so that is of course up to you the points below will be for this particular recipe so we're going to take our dough roll it out into kind of a long shape we're going to cut this into six equal servings so get as close to the same size as you can of your dough and then we're literally just going to set this aside and this dough will just have a few minutes to rise while we put together the rest of our pot pie all right we're ready to start these pot pies so you're going to need some nonstick cooking spray we're going to spray our ramekins really really well i am making six pot pies that's why I pulled out two extra ramekins and then we're going to take our one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese and we're going to divide that out into our six ramekins we are going to kind of push this up the sides and stuff but I'm going to go ahead and first get it divided evenly to make sure that I have enough cheese for all six of my ramekins I'm then just going to take that mozzarella cheese and I'm going to spread it out evenly over the bottom of my ramekin but I'm also going to kind of push it up the sides a little bit just so that I'm forming essentially a pizza crust. So I'm going to do that in all of my ramekins and then we'll be ready to add in those yummy pizza toppings. Once your cheese is done, we're going to go ahead and add our toppings. So I have one cup of my Jimmy Dean turkey sausage crumbles. And again, I'm just going to get them out evenly over the cheese in each of my ramekins here. You just want to be as close as you can. It's not going to affect the smart points by having just a tiny little bit of this or that extra, especially when it's such low points like these sausage crumbles. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm as even as I possibly can be in each of my ramekins. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in the mushrooms, the pepperoni, and the Canadian bacon. The snow is falling down And the storm is on its way But as long as you're around Everything will be okay. So now I'm going to be adding my pizza sauce. Now the recipe calls for the garlic that I showed you, but I'm not going to add that because I have garlic in my marinara. And again, I'm just going to dump my zero point marinara over all of those toppings. These look so good, you guys. So I'm going to get this nice and even. We'll kind of try to get it mixed down into the bottom. And then I am going to go ahead and top my marinara here with a little bit of Italian seasoning and basil just for that little added extra fun but as close as you can again with the marinara not a huge deal because it is zero points 
So I have some basil and Italian seasoning. Don't these look delicious? Now it's time to grab your dough and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of flatten the dough a little bit in my hand and make it big enough that it's going to cover the top of the ramekin. You can also roll this out if that's easier for you, but your dough is pretty stretchy and pliable. So again, I'm just gonna kind of stretch it out, make it big enough to cover the ramekin and this is going to be the crust of our pot pie. So once you kind of get it rolled out, then we're just going to take Take it and we're gonna put it over the top of our ramekin and then again we're gonna pull it over the edge and we're gonna seal it just like you would if you were making a chicken pot pie or really any other type of pot pie and again this dough is pretty darn pliable so we can stretch and fold and the dough does not crack so there we have it we have it kind of over the top of our ramekin so that's what your pot pie is going to look like. Can you see that like edge? Uh, yum. So let me get the rest of these ready to go and then we'll get these into the oven. to do the recipe does not say but I think it's important to do and that is I'm going to cut a slit or an X into the top of each of my pieces of dough. I feel like with this dough, it needs that little bit of room to breathe and really cook through and expand. So by cutting just that little bit of an X, it just kind of opens that dough up a little bit. And then I'm also going to spray the top of my crusts with some nonstick cooking spray. You could also do an egg wash and that's just gonna help get it just a little bit browner. And then you guys, these are done and they go into the oven at 400 degrees until they are cooked through. Look at these. Yum. 12 to 15 minutes until this crust is golden brown and then we'll be ready to get these into our meal prep container. But look how delicious these look. All right. I took my pizza pot pies out of the oven. You guys, these look so good the crust got nice and browned on the edges they're steaming piping hot so i think what i'm going to do is just let these cool wrap up the ramekin with some cellophane and just put it in the fridge and then when i go to eat my lunch i'll simply just eat it right out of the ramekin that's what makes logically the most sense let me see if i can pop up oh yeah i can pop that crust off Ooh, look at that in there Yum, that you guys is gonna be so good. And that cheese on the bottom is going to form a crust. So once it cools, you should be able to even just pop the pot pie right out of the ramekin. I think it would be better if you used a slice of mozzarella cheese like the recipe says. I should have done that and I think that that would even form a better crust, but I'm happy with these pizza pot pies. So I'm simply going to pair my pot pie with a pear or some sort of fruit pair with a pear. And I'll be back to show you my lunch and give you the smart points. So for lunch each day, this is what I'm going to have. I'm going to limit the other things in my lunch because these pot pies are a little pointy. So for one pot pie is eight smart points. And then I have one of these yummy red pears. I love these. These are so good and that's zero. I like to sprinkle even a little cinnamon on my pear. So this is going to be an eight smart point lunch, but you guys recommend these. These are good sized for eight smart points. For a sweet treat this week, I'm gonna be making peppermint brownies. I did kind of put this recipe together myself, super, super easy, but let me show you what is in our peppermint brownies. You're going to need a box of the Pillsbury sugar-free brownie mix. Now, if you do not like this mix, you can certainly make brownies from scratch just recalculate the points I'm guessing it'll be fairly similar but I like this brownie mix I don't think it has any type of aftertaste or anything it's actually really good so I'm going to be using that you're going to need some candy canes and applesauce which is a sub for the oil in the brownie recipe pure peppermint extract and of course an egg. So let's get started on these peppermint brownies. All right, let's get started on these brownies. So in my bowl, I have my box of Pillsbury sugar-free brownie mix. To that, I'm going to add one third cup of unsweetened applesauce. And again, this is just a one-to-one -one ratio of what it calls for for oil on the back of the box. We are going to prepare these brownies per the box instructions. So we're just duplicating 
applesauce in place of oil. I'm also going to add one egg per the box instructions. And then peppermint extract is super strong. I want a pretty strong peppermint flavor, but I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to start with one teaspoon of peppermint extract. I'm going to give this a good mix and then I'm just going to taste the batter and I may end up adding a, another teaspoon of peppermint extract. And then lastly, I'm just going to add in three tablespoons of water. We'll mix this together and I'll be back to let you know if I am going to add in a little more peppermint extract. So I tried the batter and I can taste the peppermint, but just not quite enough. So I'm going to actually add another half of a teaspoon of peppermint extract to my batter. And I think that's going to be perfect. So I highly recommend testing your batter. Just take a quick taste before you add any more extract because extracts can really overpower a batter. So this should be perfect. So let's get out that brownie pan and we'll get this into the pan and into the oven. So I went ahead and grabbed out my brownie pan, sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to go ahead and add in my batter. Now I want to top my brownies with some crushed candy canes. So let me show you how I'm going to do that once I get the mixture here in the pan. I'm going to go ahead and add some crushed candy canes right to the top. Is it ever since July? I've been happier than I have ever been. So here are our brownies. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven at 350 and we're going to let these cook until we can insert a toothpick and it comes out clean. Probably about 10 to 12 minutes. All right. I just pulled my peppermint brownies out of the oven. You guys, these look so, so good. So I'm going to let these cool. We're going to cut these into 10 equal servings. I'll be back to show you what a serving looks like and to give you the smart points. But let me just tell you, my house smells all things Christmas. So here are our peppermint brownies. So this is one serving. I just went ahead and cut it into smaller little squares. So you get 10 servings out of that pan. So again, this is one serving and it is four smart points. That's it, you guys. Two little brownies and they're not even that little, honestly. I would say they're two inch by two inch squares and you get two of those for four smart points. So highly recommend this for a stay on track bring to a holiday event or just have around your house for a sweet treat but yum peppermint brownies for four smart points so here's my snacks for this week i'm making it super simple i have a morning snack and i have an afternoon snack so for my morning snack of course i'll be having a built bar as you know i have this every single day is my morning snack I'm obsessed with the Built Bars. They taste like a candy bar, but they are a protein bar. They are anywhere from 110 to 170 calories, depending on the bar. This particular one is 130. There are 18 grams of protein, seven fiber, three sugar, and five fat. So these keep you nice and full. This one is the coconut almond. And I'm telling you, you guys, if you like almond joys, this is an almond joy. And this bar is three smart points it is a three smart point almond joy and that is the truth it is so delicious it has real flakes of coconut chunks of almonds seriously so incredibly good so i'm going to have this for my snack now the built bars they range again from 110 to 170 calories they are all three smart points with the exception of the peanut butter bar that one is so good that one is four smart points and then the little built bites which are mini built bars are two and those come in German chocolate cake and toffee almond. So if you haven't picked up Built Bar or you're ready to restock, use my code here on the screen for 10% off and free shipping. You guys have to get these. I would not go a day without a Built Bar. They travel great, they're a great snack, and again, they keep you full. So this is what I'm gonna be having every day in the morning between my breakfast and my lunch. And then for afternoon, I'm gonna have a yogurt. So I'm gonna have a Siggy's and it's just going to depend on the day what kind of yogurt I have. With the Siggy's, if you buy the 0% milk fat, so you see that right there, they are only three smart points and they are so good. They are creamy, thick and delicious. And the best part about the, these yogurts are their ingredients. So this is pasteurized skim milk, berries so then it says raspberries blackberries acai berries and then it has cane sugar fruit pectin 
and live active cultures. That's it. So there's no weird ingredients like there are in some of the other yogurts like the Light and Fit. They're only three smart points, so they're only one point more and well worth it. I love these yogurts. So I'm gonna have this and I'm going to top it with some of my granola. Now, if you watch my What I Eat in a Day video that will be out on Wednesday, you'll hear all about Nut Stop. And Nut Stop has so many great things. And this is the Cranberry Granola. It is six smart points for one serving. So what I'm going to do is put one point's worth on my yogurt, which is a little over a tablespoon. Plenty of granola. So good, you guys. You have to check out the Nut Stop website. They did give me 10% off for you guys. It is not an affiliate link. I don't receive any type of commission or anything. It's just a way to promote their company because they have so many great things. They have nuts and trail mixes. They have granola. They have dried fruit. They have candy. You name it. It's a great, great website, and it is extremely affordable. So I'm going to be using the cranberry granola to top my yogurt. So check out Nut Stop and definitely order yourself some Built Bars. So this is my snacks for the upcoming week. Thank you for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all three recipes. Again, you guys, absolutely delicious recipes. Must, must, must make. The recipes are all down in the description box below. I am following the green plan, so my points are calculated based on the green plan. However, if you follow blue or purple, no fear. Just go ahead and join my Facebook group. I'll put that right here on the screen for you. We calculate all of my recipes into all of the plans and post them in my Facebook group. So no matter what recipe I make, you're going to have the smart points for the blue, the green, and the purple plan. So it makes it super super, super easy. And it just helps include everybody because as you know, we're all Weight Watchers. We just follow a little tweak on the program. So definitely head over to my Facebook group. The link is down in the description box below. Also in the description box, again, are the recipes and all of the discounts and fun links that I can offer to you for some of my favorite things. So always check out that description box. It's full of useful, valuable information. If you're new, I'd love it if you take a moment and join my YouTube friends and family, hit that subscribe button and that bell. That way you're notified when I upload. Thumbs up if you love meal preps. And of course, comment down below. Let me know which of these recipes are you most excited about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy holidays, and I'll see you in my next video.